I want to thank uh, Frank Cheek for stopping by and for the first time on the show, uh, Dan Johnson of Danco. Dan, tough act to follow, man. Frank Cheek, I apologize for that. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, Dan, uh, he was letting us know, of course, we were talking about the celebrity swing, which is one of multiple things, or excuse me, uh, pay to play now. I think it's evolved into your idea, but it's, it's a huge fundraiser that Coach Cheek talked about off the air, raising a third of the scholarships. Talk about that game and uh, what that's meant to you. Well, we started out with uh, Cheek invited me to do the celebrity swing, and I didn't like that so much because you take you only get one swing, and I struck out every time. <laughs> and so we came up with the idea of to actually play a game, and we go out and get a lot of local business people, and they all contribute 500 bucks, and they come and play a couple double hitter against the team, and it's uh, worked out well the first year. It was four for four, but from then on out, I've struck out every time. Maybe so. it's not a manager position. I, I, last year, I did the manager <laughs> thing. I never played last year. Now, have you beaten the team yet? Uh, we did. This last year, we beat him. Wow. Yeah, we beat the first string team, actually. And yeah. Frank, did he throw your head after that game? Uh, no, I he didn't. He, most coaches in America are like, hey, it's a fundraiser, all for fun. I don't think Frank took it that way. No, no he doesn't. The best, the best time was two years ago, we were playing him, and it was tied. We took it into overtime, and then his pitcher walked the leadoff batter, and he came storming out of the dugout and yanked her before she even got the last pitch out. I mean, he takes it pretty seriously. Got to love uh, Coach Now, Dan, talk about your background. Are, are you from the North Coast? Uh, how did you work your way up here? What's, what's kind of your story? People see you, they recognize Danco, but they don't really know you. Yeah, well, I, I born and raised here. My mom and dad have a family business called Carl Johnson's that was originated by my grandpa, who was Carl, and I... Uh, Lived here my whole life. When I was a kid, uh, my dad and I used to come to the East Gym and watch all the Jacks games back when nobody watched the Jacks yeah. games. It was just basically my dad and I, and my brother would come on occasion, but he wasn't that much into sports. And, and it just evolved into uh, me really believing in the community. And I think Humboldt State has a huge spot in the community and in the economic growth here. And so that's why we. So, what did that mean to you? I, I take it fond memories as a kid and, you know, being uh, coming to the games as a fan. So at what point did you kind of step up and become more than a fan? Yeah, well, Dan Collin is, is, uh, uh, and Tom Trepiak are probably a large reason why we are supporters and that they, you know, we know that they're good stewards of the money and they're good stewards and it goes to the right place and it gets the kids involved. And, you know, the better the kids, the more people we have involved in the program, then the better it is for the community. Just like last Saturday night here, you know, you were here in the gym. and Absolute first sellout uh, ever in the new Lumberjack Arena. We, we filled it, so that was, that was great. Yeah. But. Talk about, you know, I'm sure, you know, having one of the most successful businesses in Humboldt County, you're constantly getting hammered for, hey, donate this, we want this, help us out here. But, you know, obviously you've got to make choices with your dollars. And, A, you don't even have to give any for starters. But you do. Why Humboldt State? What value do you think that has to the community? Well, we, uh, uh, to, we give to basically things that are, are involved with our kids. And then we give to Humboldt State. And that's pretty much what my wife and I have decided that where we want to do our philanthropy efforts. And we... Um, we think that the programs that the school offers and that the, the young student athletes that it brings up, and uh, we have a lot of those athletes that have gotten involved in our family. We have them over for dinner, and they coach our kids, and just the asset to have this in our community is just incredible, and the level of uh, players and coaches, it's, it's just incredible. So that's really why we do it, and we can see we like to give to uh, something that can make a difference. And we think at the university we do make a difference. And we, we do, maybe it's one more kid that can come to a team that helps that team win. And uh, where, rather than, you know, just giving it to one of these, you know, a nonprofit where it just is another dollar that goes into the pool. All right, well, talk about your community guy. And you want to see economically, you said this, this community grow. Uh, athletics are under siege across the United States as budget cuts take place. It's, it's one of the first places, you know, presidents and universities look. Uh, because maybe they don't feel it's part of the college experience. But you as a business owner, what role do you see athletics playing in future, maybe employees for you or people who are going to come in and ask you for a job? Yeah, well, it's, it's a big part. I mean, our, currently our property manager is a girl by the name of Laura Barrett, who mm -hmm. was a four-time or played here for four years in, in the women's basketball program. So the, the student, the, the learning that these athletes get and then allowing them to then go out into the business world is is just incredible and so we and you know our goal is to try to keep them here to keep these young athletes here because you know there's not a lot of job opportunities here and so we try to produce those for them so that they can stay all right if other community members or people uh, out there and they're thinking about maybe what they want to do with their dollars why would you say to a local business owner or someone who's got some money to donate uh, in or out of the area why would it be important for them to give to Humboldt State 
Well, I would say, you know, first of all, just come to the East, or not the East Gym, but the... Bad habit. Yeah, I say it all the, the time on the radio. And welcome to the Lumberjack Arena. And come so to the Lumberjack okay. Arena, you know, on, on uh, one weekend and just see uh, what, what's going on in here and the, the, the entertainment value that has been offered there. And also, I would urge them to invite an athlete over and meet them and see, uh, you know, how educated and how rigorous these people are about, you know, trying to be good at their sport plus their academics. And, uh, and they can really see that they're making a difference. And, you know, my, I've got three kids, and they're all pretty athletic. And so, you know, I just hope that someday they'll play sports somewhere that they have people like me that are, you know, behind the school that are helping that school make it. And a lot, most of the good universities you see, like Stanford University and these universities, they have good philanthropy efforts behind them. Absolutely. And it's not like you're, you're a, a one-sport pony. I mean, uh, I know softball, we talked about you do with that. You're, you're heavily involved in the new locker room for football. I know when we were courting Rob Smith as a football coach, you had a little get-together at your house. Uh, obviously, Danco seats right behind me here in Lumberjack Arena. So you're giving to all sports. Do you have a favorite or? Uh... Well, pro I mean, I, we tend to give. We started with the women's sports just because you, I felt that the women's sports were a little bit, you know, underfunded, and so that's why we started with softball. And then um, we're, we do basketball. They have the frenzy, the free throw mm -hmm. frenzy coming up Wednesday night. So pr probably mostly the women's sports, but. Um, we're, we, we're starting to help out with the football program a little bit as well. Which I love, well, of course, being a former football player. But I, I have to ask you, as a kid, as a supporter now, favorite Lumberjack moment? Favorite Lumberjack moment? Hmm. I would say probably the uh, regionals a couple of years ago when we had San Bernardino in the gym. I mean, unfortunately, we didn't win the game, but it was. I was sitting there with Rob Arkley, and you know we have all these seats here that Rob from Security National so generously donated. And sitting there with Rob was his first game ever, oh, wow. and that gym was. Just, we never sat down almost the whole <laughs> second half, and unfortunately, it didn't work out. But it was pretty it was exciting. A lot of fun. Hey, Dan, thanks so much. I went too bad. Now what? No, was Dan easy. Johnson of Danco coming back next with the mother of HSU athletics, Sue Simon, on Humboldt State tonight. February is full of fun at Bear River Casino. Celebrate Mardi Gras when we hand out colorful beads at the Players Club, and you could win free slot play if you correctly guess the number of beads in the jar. This all takes place on February 24th. Every Thursday is Ladies' Night with margarita specials from 5 p.m. until closing, and at 8 p.m. there's karaoke with your host, Chris Clay. We also have live music on Friday and Saturday nights starting at 9 p.m. Win and bear it at Bear River Casino. Escape to a whole new adventure. Ignite your senses with the warmth of a wood, gas, or pellet stove from Shaper's Ace Hardware. In Shaper's Stove Department, select the style of stove that fits your lifestyle before the weather gets cold. Vermont Casting Stoves. They're not only beautiful, but an efficient heating solution for your home. Let Shaper's Ace Hardware give you a demonstration and show you the full line of wood burning and gas stoves by Vermont Castings. On sale now at Shaper's Ace Hardware and Friendly Henderson Center, Eureka.